Entitlements are the source of the problem. So what are entitlement programs? Well, and very simply, an entitlement program is a program that obligates the United States government to make a payment to an individual or an institution or any entity under the law if the individual or the entity meets some qualifying requirements that are specified in the law. And so a good example of a program, in time a program would be Social Security. Once you turn age 66 and you have a certain amount of earnings, you're entitled to a check from the United States government each month of a certain amount. Food stamps, if you're a low income person, don't have a lot of assets, you're entitled to a food stamp benefit each month of a couple hundred dollars. So, so the law specifies the eligibility requirement, the law specifies the benefit schedule that you will receive depending upon the circumstances. And so when you think about that, think about the consequences of these entitlement programs, the expenditures are open-ended. They depend upon a whole host of things that determine how many people show up for benefits. If the economy sags a little bit, more people show up for benefits. If the program has incentives in it for participation, then people will show up for benefits. But the important point here is that there's no fixed budget that's set in advance for these entitlements. The expenditures are whatever they are. They just you start out the end of the year with some guesstimate of what they might be, and at the end of the year, what they are depends upon the number of people that come and collect the benefits and the average benefit that they receive. Think about the Medicare program. So the Medicare program reimburses doctors, hospitals, and healthcare providers for the services they provide to eligible individuals. So that budget is completely open-ended. The expenditures are ultimately determined by how many people go to the doctor for checkups, how many people enter the hospital, how many people enter home health agency and agencies and so forth. And so you can see that these entitlements are open-ended, not fixed. Contrast that to a program like Head Start. Head Start has a fixed budget expenditure up front. There's a certain amount appropriated, and then that pro appropriation is allocated among a bunch of of, uh, uh, home, uh, of uh, Head Start providers. The Defense Department's budget, it's fixed in advance by an appropriation, and funds are allocated within that total. So very, very different types of programs, uh, and the former being uh, explosive. So uh, what are the major entitlement programs? This chart shows you uh, some of the major entitlement programs. I got most of the big ones in here. There's a few ones that are not, but most of the big ones are in here. Uh, and each of their respective areas uh, are uh, determined by uh, their share of total uh, entitlement spending. So total entitlement spending uh, last year was about $2.8 trillion, or about $8,500 for every man, woman, and child in the United States. So it's an enormous expenditure. The distribution of those expenditures are starting at, um, at uh, 12 o'clock and going clockwise. Um, Social Security and Medicare, two programs that are non-means tested. These programs, that is, these programs provide benefits independent of a person's income or wealth. Uh, then you add Medicaid, which is a healthcare program for low-income individuals, and you're now three-fourths of that $2.8 trillion. The other welfare programs actually account for a very small part of our budget. Uh, and then to round it out, you have veterans programs and, and, and retirement benefits for, for civil uh, servants. How did, we, how did we get to this $2.7, $2.8 trillion? Most of the programs that have been put in place over the years have been started with the best of intentions, intentions that every one of us would agree is the right thing for a government to do, I would hazard to say. The New Deal entitlements were designed to provide a measure of economic security for individuals in old age, 
to prevent impoverishment in old age. The Great Society welfare programs were designed to provide a safety net against poverty for those individuals who couldn't provide for themselves. So very narrow, but very noble purposes. Today's entitlement system is quite different. It has evolved into really an extraordinary, complex, and very costly system. So from those two basic goals, we now have a whole system that's taken as a whole that provides assistance or benefits to over half of the US population is now receiving some benefit from at least one federal entitlement program. If you take Social Security and Medicare out of the equation, since everybody who's over 66 is on those programs, it's still the case that over 40% of the entire population is in households that are receiving at least one benefit. The benefits are not targeted uh, on the poor. 60% of all the entitlement benefits go to individuals who are not poor to begin with. And then over $700 billion goes each year to individuals that are in the upper half of the income distribution. So these programs that had originally very good intentions have grown into this huge complex and very costly system that doesn't target benefits very well at all. So I'll go quickly through this one. Entitlements at $2.8 trillion are about 60% of the budget today. And so here's how they got there. And so this chart breaks the budget into three categories of spending, entitlements, defense in green, and then all other programs in black. And so you can see the orange entitlement graph rising steadily throughout the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, all the way through to today. Their growth doesn't matter whether there's a Republican in a White House, whether there's a Democrat in a White House. It doesn't matter whether their Congress is controlled by Democrats or Republicans. You know, there's an old saying that when it comes to government spending, there's no difference between Republicans and Democrats, except Democrats enjoy it. And it really is true. Republicans are always grumbling about the higher spending, and then they go along and vote for it. Um, but so you can see in this chart, which the only category of spending, by the way, which it excludes, is interest payments on the debt. But if I did include that, the, the, uh, the amount in 2018 would be about half of what the defense budget is. So it's really not that important uh, today. It will be important in the future, obviously. All right, but in any event, you can see that all of the growth in government spending for the last seven decades has been in these entitlement programs, these open-ended programs. You can see today entitlements are about two-thirds of total program spending, excluding interest on the debt. Defense spending has been heading steadily down over the last seven decades, six decades. The hump up there is uh, in the 1950s, of course, is the Korean War. The second little hump there in the 60s is Vietnam. The third hump in the 80s is the Reagan uh, buildup in defense. Uh, and then the fourth, surprising probably to you, is the cost of the Afghan, uh, Stan, and Iraq wars. Uh, again, rather a modest cost relative to GDP and relative to the growth of entitlement spending. But a lot of people sort of blame defense for our budgets, uh, deficits. And this chart shows you, no. You could double the defense budget, which nobody's talking about, and the defense expenditures would still be only half of the expenditures on entitlement programs. And so uh, the, the culprit here are, uh, has always been and will be in the future um, entitlement programs. The projected increase in the official government projections, which this follows, is all Social Security and Medicare, all programs for the elderly, neither of which are means tested both of which provide assistance to individuals regardless of their income. The number of retirees 
is going to go from today, 50 million, to 20 years from now, 80 million. And they're all going to be collecting Social Security and Medicare benefits. So I've talked about the fiscal cost of these entitlement programs. Let me briefly mention other costs or economic costs that go along with them. Basically, these entitlement programs have a incentive effects that undermine uh, self-sufficiency among individuals. Social Security and Medicare induce individuals to save less when they're young, and they encourage otherwise productive senior citizens to withdraw from the workforce. And so both of them, both effects, of course, are counter to economic progress. Our welfare and disability programs have a similar work reduction incentive, and they have an incentive for individuals to not invest in their own human capital or their own improve market improvements. Now, given that 40% of those under age 65 uh, are on entitlement programs, the consequences of these incentives are not just consequences for individuals that are receiving the benefits, they're consequences for the economy now as a whole. The programs have become so much part of our economy, and each one of them has a work disincentive that they act now to retard uh, economic growth. <clears throat> 